<laughs> Welcome back to Geek Show Arcade. Oh yeah. Uh, hoy, hoy. That's right. Beep boop. It's the Geek Show Arcade where we talk about video games and video game related things. Let's kick it off by introducing our panelists. Back guest paneling and guesting today, it's Lang. Oh, I made it for a second round, guys. Look at the Good job. job. Thank you. Who would have thought? You were on time and everything for the second round. It was tough, let me tell you. <laughs> um, I'm Lang. I struggle. Find me, find me on Instagram or Blue Sky. That's really all I do because if you try to find me on Facebook, it will be the happier side that only my mother sees. <laughs> Family oriented, <laughs> Lang. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amazing. there you go. All right, down there by Lang, he's Owen. Hey there, you beautiful listeners and watchers if you're watching on YouTube. If you haven't gone to YouTube and watched, like, what are you even doing? There are you know? dozens comment, of leave, them. Leave a comment and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smash that like button. Or is that how you say it? <laughs> yep. Um, that was, you can that find was me so here. 2017. I know, right? It's like, you smash know, most that of our like subscribers that like, watch our show uh, are not subscribed. You should subscribe. Uh, you should subscribe. Anyway, find me here or on the Geek, <laughs> Geek Show help desk. That's the two places you're going to get the most of me nowadays. I, I occasionally scuttle around on X slash Twitter, but uh, what about the talk texts? TikTok, I don't, I don't do that. I'm after I have read some of the privacy stuff has come out late lately that TikTok yep. is getting from you. Yep. And have you read I, about Instagram? I it's even past <laughs> it's past even Guilty. my threshold. For TikTok, just wow! But I, your threshold. That must be I know. Bad. But I still spent mm, seven hours on there today. You know, <laughs> so it's not past his threshold. <laughs> Conservatively, <laughs> threshold anyway. not passed. <laughs> I feel like I'm right. going to get to the bottom of it one time. One day I'll get to the bottom Someday of TikTok. You'll, you'll scroll all the way down to the mm. first TikTok. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, he's Jaron. He doesn't do the TikToks. Nope, I don't. I'm Jaren, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jaren. And I, I have something special for you, YouTube watchers. This Ooh, is, is a, this is a Sega Nomad. Yes, sir. What? This was a portable Sega Genesis that came out in the '90s. Show the top. You can see where the full size Genesis game goes in there. It goes Whoa, into this cartridge that's so right cool. here. Where'd you look, get that? Look how thick it is compared is to my hand. Thick boy. Is that from your past? Is this is this, this is mine. played yeah. by Jaren? Yes, I bought this past? with my own money. Whoa! Wait, um, does it take C batteries? It doesn't even have a battery pack on it. Uh, you, you I think you bought it in. separately, and you uh, <laughs> put it in right here with these pins. You like Jeez. lock it in there. Um, awesome. Yeah, so and look even, how big that screen is. It is like <laughs> two inches. Even Sega was like, That's guys, cool. we can't even get away with batteries in this. Even after yeah. Game Gear, this would this would be awesome. that much worse. Was this after Game Gear? This yeah. was after Game Gear, which I also have right here too. Do you have the modified version that you that you? Here's made the Game so Gear. Wow. Play the. I forgot how chunky that thing was. Play off Here's of the, power. Here's the magnifying glass for the Game Gear. Whoa! <laughs> you uh, clip it on, put it over the screen right there. Make sure yeah. you can see those Good pixels. Stuff. Remember that when all was all the rage of the Game Boy too, like the light you could slide down the side, the light attachment yeah. for the original Game Boy. All those like old school you could play watch in the dark. light. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can play in the dark. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. The D pad though, it feels actually pretty good on the Nomad. I, I was surprised. Are you fondling it right now? He I is. am. It, it feels we like better. in between a joystick and a D-pad. It's kind of weird. That's a quote, we better by move the way. Who else Are you Jeremy? fondling that right now? <laughs> Who else likes to fondle things? I'm making the second game. Lando? What Here was that? Here we go. Lando doesn't fondle hey. things as much as Jaren. Not at all. I definitely don't fondle <laughs> things, ever. That I make a point not to, actually. It's Lando! It's me. I'm here at the game show. I'm going to talk and say words and do things about games. It's going to be the best. I'm so we'll excited. See. We will see, Tony. We will, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Tony, he's our host. Yo, I'm Tony. Check me out on Twitter at Quad T Tony or on other Geek Show podcast mm -hmm. podcasts. Uh, all right. Do we have any emails? We do. Email. Got an email from Chris, uh, subject line Halo. He said, I just finished mm. the Master Chief Collection and nice. Infinite on PC. Will there be another Halo game to continue the story? Thank 100%. You, Chris. There's no way Microsoft is abandoning that IP. There will be another Halo game, 
And they have also announced, I believe, that they are ditching their custom engine that they've worked on for years Woo, and years. And finally. they're moving to Unreal 5. Uh, nice. Dang. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, did you guys see the new season of Halo? Not yet. I'm I halfway through it, and it's oh. uh, pretty good, actually. Oh, like, much man, better. It's good. I enjoyed the first season, and the second season is way better. Oh, yeah. I think yep. it's because they get closer in line with game lore. Yeah, maybe. But anyway. Chris, you should try out Halo 5 on Xbox if you can. That was a Halo game. Sounds like it you haven't played that one yet. It was. Yeah, if you it was, played it, on, it was a It was a game, for sure. On, I was going to say, doesn't that... <laughs> That makes a leap from the lore, doesn't it? A little bit. They just they <laughs> took leap away. From, it, it is it the was, lore. How can it make a leap from was, the lore? It was the it first so one. Well, it was the first leaps. one that really pulled away from couch co-op. And yeah. there was a lot of missteps with Halo Five. A lot of missteps there. Mistakes were made. I still enjoyed it. I still but did. Not for the reasons yeah. I liked the other games. <laughs> yeah. Or at least all the same reasons. It did so. progress the story a little bit. It was more like a cinematic yeah. adventure. Yep. All right, is that it? That's it. All right, cool. Thanks for writing in. All right, let's talk about... Jaron brought up some handheld stuff. And so what better time to jump into the churning of the rumor mill for an Xbox handheld? Gassed up. Hype train. So, yep, yep. The Shovel wheel churns. Coal. Shovel that coal into the hype train's engine and uh let's get moving we're gonna get this baby up to 88 miles per hour yeah. uh the x the xbox handheld is not confirmed but it is heavily rumored and in a recent interview phil spencer the head of xbox all but said it's happening now a handheld i believe was in the leaked um what do you call it timeline i guess product line from the uh some of the litigation that microsoft was going through for the activision blizzard buyout right and phil spencer already said that that is a really old timeline and that that, that doesn't really apply but that doesn't mean that they aren't doing some of this stuff on there so uh basically phil spencer says the hardware xbox hardware team is currently considering quote different hardware form factors and things they could go do uh and then also what should we build to find new players and that would be a completely new area for microsoft xbox right. as a handheld and what's cool so. about xbox is they've they've already mapped out a handheld path with the series s a more lower powered yep. machine that already has all support for all the xbox games so that that sounds really cool and compelling because you'd instantly have a handheld with hundreds of titles that you could play well probably thousands with the back compat stuff with back not yeah. and not to mention game pass yep. yeah and yeah game pass, and game pass. Be huge on that so jaron did you watch that video the fox made on uh youtube about what, what he thinks say? no okay so he made a really compelling um argument about how i don't want to say simple but definitely how an Xbox handheld could be done. And he used uh, Feasible, one, of, yeah. one of his um, AMD 8840U powered devices to show what kind of uh, power envelope that you could use and still get Series S level performance uh, with, the, with the newer versions of AMD's SOCs. Because you got to mm -hmm. remember, the Xbox Series S is built on Zen 2 architecture for CPU, and we're moving into Zen 5 within the next six months, roughly, maybe maybe a little bit longer, six to eight months. And uh, our DNA 3, and we're, we're moving into, uh, on the Xbox Series S, and we're moving into our DNA 4 territory probably within the next year. So if, and those are, those are the kinds of things that if you had a, a partner like Microsoft, AMD would want them to have access to their best stuff at the time to make the best possible mm. um, device using their their SOCs. So, question to the to the panelists here: Would you rather buy a PS5 Pro or an Xbox handheld? 
because it seems like Microsoft isn't going to have an Xbox Series Pro. Yeah, they might have a handheld. So Phil Spencer already said that they're not planning on doing a mid mid cycle refresh, um, and that was recently, like it was in the last six months. Mm. If I didn't already have two handhelds, I would definitely be very excited for an Xbox handheld. But I got the Steam Deck OLED and the ROG Ally, and I don't know what it would do that those two don't already do for me. Right. So Game Pass, Game Pass is the one area where I'd be interested. You can I'd do Game Pass that. on ROG Ally or a GPU yeah, because it's four. Windows. You know, yeah. it's Windows. I mean, depending right, on what level the, of Game Pass you pay for, right? The the Ally experience isn't too great though for the console crowd, and the battery it's, life isn't great true. either. It's true, and that's and that's another thing to consider. Do you want a more console like experience? Because that's a Steam Deck, yes, please, or or that's a uh, handheld Xbox. Well, I think that's one of the things he's Phil Spencer notes in this in this article. He's like, you know, when I when I open. I want it to feel like when I like when I want when I turn on the television or whatever. He's like, I want it to feel like my dashboard of my Xbox. Like so, you know, he's he wants he wants that that console feel mm-hmm. for this. So we'll see. I don't know. I I think I would probably go at the PS5 Pro. Which to be you really? No, not me. The the, the freaking handheld Xbox is like a no brainer. Yeah. Yes, please it, give me that. What do you think? Like Mike? a, a handheld Xbox that, that you can hook up to the TV, like a Switch. That that seems like a very compelling product to me. Mm. I'd go handheld. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I probably would too if I if I had to choose between the two. So, the thing with the PS5 Pro is Sony's already said they don't have any new Sony big first party games coming out for at least the next year, and so that really tamped down any enthusiasm yeah. I had for. The PS5. Well, I have Pro. no, I have no PS5. at like no PlayStation at all. So, hmm. okay, maybe some games you want to dip play. your toes in the, yeah. uh, the stuff you Spider-Man, haven't played yet, which there's know. some excellent stuff. So uh, that's well, good. it's coming out on PC anyway. You don't. Yep, need to that's that. true. Valid point. Hmm. All right, so we will keep you updated on any news that uh, you know comes out of this, but very potentially exciting things. Now let's talk about things that are less exciting. Uh, Dragon's Dogma has not launched to very good uh, uh, consumer reviews. <laughs> it's been interesting because it got such praise right before it launched. And now, then it launched, and you, and you look at Steam, the, the user reviews, it's overwhelmingly mostly negative. Mostly negative? That, yeah, that's, oh, is that's it over- has, it, has, it, has it made it all the way down to overwhelmingly negative? Oh, I, I want to check now. But it was in the, either it. mostly or overwhelming. And uh, it it has severe technical issues, very limited CPU. I mean, the, the way it, it, yeah, li- very limited CPU performance. And surprisingly, it has microtransactions everywhere. And it's not like the typical buy an outfit or skin or whatever. Or skin, yeah. It's um, really bizarre stuff like uh, Wakestone restore the dead to life so you can buy uh for a dollar the ability to revive your character um <laughs> but you can you just can, earn it in the game <laughs> or you can spend two dollars to change the way your character looks um you can spend three dollars to enable some form of fast traveling which is it's just like table it's, stakes it's not, for an rpg it's not the it's not the only way to fast travel but it's a, right. another way to fast travel um it's made so its way it's, up to mixed by the way it's made its way up to mixed yeah it's oh, mixed, mixed. Yeah. all right so, all right which does uh, not does not go in not line good. with the critic reviews when it first came out yeah so really bizarre microtransactions but when you see uh when you look at it from the perspective of what capcom has been doing lately remember the story we had a couple months ago where they're adding drm to older games oh that's true which is breaking mods mm-hmm um, so they're, they're kind of waging war on the mod community and adding DRM to where it wasn't before. Now they're charging for these microtransactions. It makes you wonder, are they going to p- put these microtransactions in older games as well? Um, mm. Are they making it so mods don't work so that they can start selling these microtransactions? It, it's, yeah, make the old games less fun uh, so it pushes them to the new gen, right? The new... No, it, it's mean. like selling mods enough, rather than... A market for microtransactions on old games. 
yeah. personally, so, but uh, maybe so why, why, why add the why add the DRM though? The, I think they thought they were combating piracy. Yeah, in old games, come on. Um, and, uh, I didn't say it was logical, but <laughs> yeah. But I, I saw something on Twitter where they compared like cheat codes from twenty years ago, like a sheet of cheat codes, and then they had a picture of these macro transactions. They're basically selling cheat codes. Yep. Game Genie. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Game Genie. Oh, I have, I have one of those too. Game Genie in oh. small bites. What other random game device? Ladies and gentlemen, say? this will be we'll a YouTube pop- episode. Oh, game Genie. Look at game that. Genie He's for the Game Gear. Check that yeah, out. Great. Game Gear, Game Genie. The uh, GGGG. It even had, it has a little flap right here with the instruction booklet on how to do it. It's got oh, all your codes fantastic. right there. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's a shame that Capcom's done this with Dragon's Dogma 2 because it was a very hyped, very uh, you know looked forward to game by a lot of folks. But the funniest part about all this is um, they did not enable the microtransactions until after the game launched so everyone that got early copies to review had no idea the microtransactions were there yeah they didn't and even know that, that was sucks. a thing shady so yeah you don't even need the microtransactions to enjoy no. the game they they you didn't can, design the game that way but exactly. it just kind of casts a pall over yes. the entire thing exactly and and yeah if you want any further proof of that just look at the reviews you go see the the reviews the the like journalism reviews that came out before the game had microtransactions and you see they had a fantastic time with it with no microtransactions in sight so yeah the most recent recommend the most like helpful the most helpful review in the past day is not recommended not and recommended. it basically says the reviewer is basically asked to ignore the microtransactions yep and in, the, in their review and so i don't yes so here's a question like all these microtransactions don't most of the higher ranked triple a games limit their microtransactions like spider-man right there's like hardly any except for maybe some download stories but like Baldur's yes. gate is like the best right i haven't played it yet because there's no microtransactions in Baldur's yeah. Gate, except for they if you proved- want to buy the deluxe edition yeah mm. um crazy yeah See, so and, and that's just- and that's what and that's the thing with the uh, with the community. They there's there's kind of a you know there's kind of a thing where it's like the gaming community at large will okay a game costing more like full like full price sixty or seventy bucks if they feel like they're getting the whole game and they're not having any microtransactions or crap yeah. like that. On the other hand, if the game is cheap or free, they also think you know a lot of people also think okay if you microtransactions that's okay because the game itself is cheap or free right but when you combine idea. full price game seven dollar game and microtransactions on top of that at launch seems it's a just, bit greedy right yeah. yep too right? much like the that's that whole remember the freemium versus you know pay to pay to no ads like on the app stores and stuff mm-hmm. like that's kind of the idea where it's like well you're getting the game for free so why not a few ads like come on yeah yep. or Same can you kind pay of idea. well counterpoint game development has gotten a lot more expensive and game prices have not changed from the 80s when games actually were like 70 80 dollars back then that's a fair point but it also were means... they overcharging were they overcharging back then oh yeah or are they undercharging now said they were you know sure. like are they undercharging now were they undercharging now or overcharging back then i feel like they were undercharging yes. now and they were overcharging back then but uh yeah. But the, the point of that isn't so much that, okay, we need to pile microtransactions on. It's we need to change the way we make games and have them yes. not be so expensive. Make them you know? smaller. There's no reason we need to spend $800 million on a game or whatever the final Ooh. cost is going to be for Grand Theft Auto 6. I guarantee you're in the, I guarantee they're in the three four hundred million dollar. Did I hear that game just changed studios or something? No. no there was no, some no. news about that. No, that's Rockstar. You got suckered. Mm. But yeah, I guarantee that'll be a several hundred thousand dollar game develop cost by the time it finally comes out. But either, but look at what they made over GTA Five over the last. 10 years people See, are and, that, still and that's that that's an interesting point as well because they were able to milk that for yeah. 12 years they can, they can invest eight hundred thousand dollars in this because 
because they know what the output's going to be, basically, like what the return is going to be. I don't think the problem well, is giant AAA games. I think the problem is that is that's the only thing these large studios are funding. Right. Yes, that is a big problem. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. It's like the guy at the Oscars. I can't remember who it was, but he won. There was there was one of the guys that won for I think foreign film or something like that. He said, "Hey Hollywood," he said this on stage. "Hey Hollywood, how about instead of one two yeah. hundred million dollar movie, we get yeah. ten twenty million dollar movies? Yeah, you know, more movies, same, give people a shot. Same kind of idea. Well, and I think we're yeah. seeing kind of a renaissance of indie development over the yeah. last two years and going forward. There are a ton of indie games coming out that aren't sixty dollars, seventy dollars." Uh, that you know they're in the the thirty to fifty dollar range, and they're fantastic games, especially with the model that we have now. L- like it or not, uh, we have this early access model that a lot of game studios use, and it can be very beneficial if the game continues to evolve and right, like Power know, World improve. right now. Power Power World's one of those games <laughs> out there that's just kind of like came out a, of nowhere. I think it, was, I think it came out of nowhere. It's thirty thirty bucks. Yep. And I it's been it's been a blast, but again, it's in early they say, "Oh, it's in early access." Yep. You know, so but anyway, um interesting stuff there. Now, uh let's talk about uh some really neat stuff coming out of GDC this week, this last week where Microsoft is showing off something they're doing to help make AI upscaling easier to implement. Not a new type of AI upscaler, but make what's out there easier to use. This is me. This, this is, is me you, and my Landon. story I stole <laughs> from is, Tony. I don't know why I stole the story, but I did. Yeah, I was really I'm gonna tell you about it you now. chose that one. Yeah, you don't even <laughs> know too. what upscaling tech is, do you? Microsoft has introduced a new technology called <laughs> <laughs> I've done the thing. Lost right over. <laughs> Direct SR that aims to make upscaling solutions like DLSS and FSR easier for game developers to integrate into their games. And I know that's a good thing for you guys. For like Tony and Jaren, they're always complaining and moaning and boning about how hard it is to integrate into games. Definitely I don't know about better. Boning. Boning boning integrating boning. at all. Moaning and boning. Not that's, moaning and boning about in between. this anyway. Put that, yeah, put that on <laughs> your no, This is a good thing. For, this is a good thing for Moaning and boning. This is a good thing for you. <laughs> Sounds Cause naughty. Because you, you guys are like, oh, but yeah, game divorce is integrated. And it's hard. This is oh, easier you mean and better. Moan, moaning and groaning. No, okay. he means moaning and boning. <laughs> I like that way better. In fact, <laughs> writing that down right now. For... <laughs> You've seen you right here, folks. You saw the birth and boning. of a, you saw the birth of a new <laughs> idiom. <laughs> moaning and boning. I gotta give Lang some new quotes, okay, guys? So next time we play the game, it'll be fun. <laughs> um, so DirectSR will provide features that can be supported across different upscaling technologies to facilitate broader adoption of upscaling in PC games for Tony and Jaren. Yeah. Um, I guess Owen, too. Um, Lang, I think, plays Ooh, games. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Um, however, while the flexibility of DirectSR was underlined at GDC, it seems that the technology is still in its early stages. And a oh, demo yeah. may not be shown until next year's GDC. So this is a this is like a, you know, touch me in the morning, walk away kind of situation. You know, it's a tease. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wait, what? It's, well, wow. Touch me in the morning and walk away. Have you never heard that saying before? No, after, no. after the moaning and boning. Moaning and boning. Yeah, yep. That's after the moaning and boning. I'm embracing wow. the in between energy in the real show. We got just it's Lambos full of awesome. idioms today. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is what you get in the game show. So basically, it makes easier for devs to plug in DLSS, FSR, XESS, uh-huh. yeah. all into one the, the PB and package. All the, yeah, all the things. So rather Which, than just supporting DLSS, it'll be easier for devs to support all of them. Which is fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah. Anything that makes they call stuff it, what like they, that. What they say, they introduced it, Microsoft introduced it as the missing link. So mm, okay. kind of the... Now, watch. Like you said, it's still a ways off. We probably won't yep. see it in development. In actual Microsoft has only for, just begun work. Yeah. It'd be a long time before the technology months. is realized and widely adopted. Probably two years away. Or more. But anyway. I'm glad they're working on it. That's fantastic. All right. Let's also talk about some uh, Neato stuff yes. with GDC yeah. this week. We got a sneak peek at something that looks absolutely fascinating, brought to you by Amy Hennig, who, if you don't know her <laughs> name, you should. <laughs> Because she helped with, uh, she was one of the key players in the Uncharted series. Uncharted, you got it. Oh it no! <laughs> Why? Yep. He just moaned and boned right there. Right there. <laughs> Nathan Drake. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <Orgasm>. <laughs> 
<sighs> what? What? Wow. Well. And to make sure and check the not suitable for all audiences box <laughs> on YouTube this time. <laughs> Real close. It's right there on the line. So this is your story, Jaron. Are you done? Or uh, you ready? <laughs> ready for this? Have you finished? Oh, I was thinking oh, about Uncharted. Yeah, I, I figured watch that you movie were. Again. <clears throat> Fantastic movie. Uh, uh, game was announced by Amy Hennig, who made Uncharted for a Naughty Dog. Um, when Naughty Dog was great. Make Naughty Dog great again, please. Thank you. Um, anyway, it's a game called Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. Uh, initially, I wasn't very excited about this because Marvel games, they're, they can be hit or miss. Hail Hydra. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. But the trailer looks fantastic. It's, it looks so good. It's I was set shocked in, on that. Yeah, it's set in Paris by the looks of it. Um, has Black Panther, Captain America, and two unknowns in there do you know who no they are, they are known <laughs> no they're, they're unknown gabriel jones part of the howling commandos the what now yeah exactly howling jones howling commandos, howling commandos. very old. This was, Commando. that was very old marvel property yeah that was where captain america first debuted right yeah he was in the, the howling yeah, commandos part of the howling commandos yeah. he made the howling commando group yeah. right so why are they called howling commandos because they were they crazy, howl their way into battle, and they howl as they do so. There's a little moaning and groaning going on, but uh... boning. Oh boning. right, boning. <laughs> hmm. you're gonna keep going, Jaren. This is still your <laughs> who, story. No, who, who's the other woman? You you mentioned the the dude, but oh, you, what's, uh, it's Na, Widow, isn't it? Nanali, I think is her name. Nanali. She's a Wakandan spy. Uh, okay. All right. Anyway, uh, big big news about this game is none of the characters look schlubby in like all of the other Marvel games out there. Um, uh, Spider-Man, they all look schlubby. The yeah, Marvel's Avengers, they look totally schlubby. But these character models look good. They're, the schlub factor is pretty low. Um, <laughs> it's got a low schlub factor. <laughs> yeah, the, the graphics are astounding. Um, it is just cutscenes, so we don't really know what in-game graphics are going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, well, they. I watched the whole presentation of the Unreal Engine 5.4 update that Epic had, and that's what that's what this is built on is Unreal Engine yeah. 5.4. Nice. And um, they they really made it seem that the stuff that you're seeing is actual in game in engine footage. So it is stuff that is doable with the engine, right, but it is definitely a cutscene. Yeah, it's not pre-rendered. It's it's stuff that you can do in the engine. Now, when they do in-engine cutscenes, they do definitely push it a lot harder than they do in-game because they know exactly what the screen is going to look like at, at, like at any given moment so they can turn up certain effects because they don't need to use it for geometry and things like that. Yeah. So. This will be the first... Tell you I can tell you just from watching the trailer just now, you can totally see Unreal Engine's face mapping and like mouth movements in the characters. That's pretty. That's pretty compelling. That's awesome. It looks yeah. fantastic. Yeah. The the animation works insane. This will be the first game from Skydance New Media, uh, which is led by Amy Hennig. And since it's led by her, you could probably expect an action adventure type yep. game, uh, not open up. world, which I'm very happy with. Um, so, something to watch out for. It's coming out next year. Is that right? 2025. 2025. Mm-hmm. So, maybe 26 if we're lucky. See, it's games yeah. like that that I look like I really stink at, but it's just like it's so pretty. You just sit there like, oh, wait, I got to start playing now. Yeah. And just, yeah. Oh. or Or <laughs> same, same along those same lines, it'll be doing a cutscene. And then it'll, yep. it'll transition into gameplay, and you still think it's doing a cutscene, and then you die. Yep. Like, oh, I'm playing yeah. right now. Oh, right. <laughs> no, I'm really so. excited for that story, what they presented with Black Panther and Captain America. I'm really excited for that take. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad that they're setting it in during World War II. I just, I don't know. For some reason, that seems a lot more fun than the current Marvel setting. It's going to be rad. I think it's, I think it's got mucho potential, so... Yes, very cool. And speaking of that, uh, I mentioned briefly we got what they call the State of the Unreal Engine 2024. This is where they show off all the new stuff for the next iteration, Unreal Engine 5.4, and what that means to game development on this engine. 
The most important thing, in my opinion, that they showed off in this engine, they glossed over in like four words right near the beginning of the presentation. They Those four words would be, if it, uh, nope, it was more like six words. Anyway, <laughs> the point was he said something along the lines of, um, if it, uh, if it runs, we made it faster. And so the optimization effort they put into 5.4 over the previous versions is pretty massive. Uh, you remember the Matrix un, uh, Awakens Unreal Engine 5 demo that came out a few years oh, ago? Oh, yeah. That looked, looked really, amazing. really good. And uh, they said that running that on the new Unreal Engine 5.4 would reduce render thread time by 50% and reduce GP, GPU render time by 25%. So we're talking a minimum of 25 percent less resources used which would mean higher frame rate or if you want to push the visuals more you can do that so very very cool that's the biggest thing that unreal has unreal engine 5 has lacked in my opinion and m many other folks is it's just really heavy it uses a lot of resources uh not very well if you look at immortals of avian one of the first unreal engine 5 games it's a pretty game, but for how heavy it is, it it shouldn't have been that heavy. You don't think it justifies the uh, the resource usage? I, I, I do not, know. And uh, another thing they added was um, better parallelization. Parallelization. Parallel, par parallelization. parallelization <laughs> moaning and boning. <laughs> of CPU cores, which... Never gets old. Uh, which is huge because historically Unreal hasn't been very good at dividing up the work on a CPU. Right. Between the different CPU cores. So really cool stuff. They showed off things like better volumetric uh, particle effects, like for smoke and fog and stuff like that. They showed off uh, some really good work done with the animation within the engine. Basically, a lot of the stuff they showed off was improvements or additions uh, to the Unreal Engine 5.4 that will allow a person, a developer, to not have to leave the Unreal Engine 5.4 ecosystem to do what they want to do. You don't have the less plugins, less exports out to other things when you want to add other stuff to it. So um, all 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 good stuff. So really neat, really uh, neat stuff. Unreal Engine 5.4 looks pretty rad. Um, let's see what we at here. Owen, let's talk about new yes. watermark anti-cheat features. This is another uh, another chess move in the game of anti-cheat slash leaking, uh, like uh, game leaks and stuff Footage like that. And stuff. Footage, gameplay, whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so this company called denier duro sorry i'm gonna de nouveau. De nouveau. De nouveau. they're like a they curse a... word in yeah in pc gaming yeah they're i i took to reddit on the company because i didn't know who they were and there's not good things to say out there uh <laughs> no, nobody on, likes in the nouveau. in the reddit in the reddits uh for these guys and you know they mainly because the pc gamers say that this limits gameplay like it, it uh, resources like slows the game down performance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they just kind of stick their tongue out and say whatever um but the De, nuvo developer erdetto has announced a new anti-cheat software uh, their new anti-cheat software's newest feature which is called tracemark for games so it's a it, and it's a tool that lets developers add a unique identifier identifier for game footage not just like trailers or cutscenes, but like any gameplay footage um and it, in in theory it's supposed to let developers and publishers identify players that are leaking game gameplay footage before release and can be set to visible or uninvisible or uninvisible invisible visible or invisible to the user so they'll have no idea if it's using it or not so it's it's do, you know, De Nuvo is DRM for, like we said, many of the big software releases out there. So, like Capcom and stuff. So, it it leverages the core invisible watermark technology trusted by Hollywood Studios. Oh, so this is already technology that's been used for identifying like 
back in the day, I want to say 2007 ish, 2008, if you were downloading movies, you got these screeners all the time because they would send these screeners out to movie theaters to let special features or, or if you had people that like want, got, you know, uh, reviewers that wanted to preview the, right. the film and they couldn't really, they didn't really have a good way of stopping those screeners from being copied by employees at the movie theater because it was just a Blu-ray or a DVD or whatever that they would play through their system. And then they started using this watermark technology to figure out who the studios were. So you have to put a different watermark, a unique watermark for each like person you send it out to. Yeah, basically. And it's usually your, it'll usually be your, your studio name or your, that's why it's not going broadly. It's going to mainly for game testers. It's going for press, yeah. um, stuff like that. Cause to try and do this for everybody would be going to say, you'd end up with a ridiculous. lot of unique yeah. watermarks. If every developer yeah. had to have their own watermark, mm -hmm. you know, whenever they take anything or whatever. Yeah. And There's you know, big, big surprise per game. So big surprise. Most of those watermarked were coming out of Europe, European countries. So and... where copyright laws aren't quite as, as strict, but, but yeah, so they can, they're, they're coming for the journalists is kind of what this article on PC gamer talks about. Um, and they just kind of say, um, er, er, Nuvo, what are they? De Nuvo. De Nuvo. Denuvo is not very concerned. <laughs> they're just like, yeah, we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. Here's they're buying it. We don't care. It's a big enough thing that they're buying it. So anyway, yeah. a new watermark. So I mean, it doesn't really apply to a lot of people, but if you're in the press, uh, if you game test, watch out. Yep. Easier to find you. Uh, let's see. Um, follow up to last week's story about Super Mario Maker's final level that couldn't be beaten. <sighs> yeah. I heard about this. Lando. I heard about yeah, this. This is this is this is. Uh, I've I've decidedly mixed feelings on this one. So here, so last week we told you we, we talked about has Super Mario Maker been beaten yet? Right. This is about clearing all the levels. And last as of last week, they're at one level, a level called Trimming the Herbs. And this level is an incredibly difficult level. Right. Um, there's some humans that were getting close to beating it, and I say humans on purpose here. Come to find out that the level was, was beaten by a TAS. Um, for those of you who don't know what TAS is, it stands for Tool Assisted Speed Run. And this is essentially where you plug your controller into a computer and have your computer do frame perfect input. So you program it oh. to push the button on the, spe the, the specific frames of the game that you specify. That way, creating basically a program that runs that plays the game for you. Perfectly, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's a legitimate form of speed running, and um, there's some really cool showcase items out there. But the problem is, is this guy uploaded the the level to Mario Maker by a task without telling anybody. Mm. So everyone thought it was a real level. Everyone's trying to beat it. Kind of find out he had this huge apology note on Twitter saying, "Yeah, sorry, Please don't hate me, <laughs> don't hate me." Oh. It was a task, and everyone's like, "What? Tasks were even possible on the Wii U at that time?" And he's like, "Yeah, kind of find out it was. I did it." <laughs> um, so, come to find oh, out that the no. last level to, to beat a Mario Maker was a giant troll after all, which, you know, is kind of a, a so good... So you had to have... A, did you have to have a task to beat it? You could... There so was there no are humans humanly... that are incredibly close to beating it. There's some humans right. that can, <laughs> that can in practice, have beaten all the parts of it. Now it's just a matter of doing it all together. Oh, wow. I um, so I think it's possible for humans to do. However, it's very, very difficult for humans to do. So, like I said, it's kind of nice that, I mean, Mario Maker, it? most levels were giant trolls. <laughs> so, it's kind of a nice end that the last level to beat was a troll. It's fitting, yeah. It's fitting to an extent, but at the same time, it kind of sucks because it makes it feel like, oh, yeah, now we're like, done. Feels like oh, the 90s, cool. though. Like, it feels, yeah. that actually feels like how games used to be, though. Like, yeah. you'd, like, like, you'd beat the level, you'd beat everything, and then there'd be one secret level or something, and it was just basically impossible yeah so there's still a number of um people in the mario maker community still trying to beat this level like so they they're like i don't like yeah technically we beat the game I'm but we think we can do it so they still have 20 just around somewhere around 20 days left um and they're still trying they're still trying to do it oh i hope they do it yeah so if you want to go watch them go ahead over to twitch and there's people doing it all the time wow 
All right, two quick stories, and then Lang has a review for us of his new toy. Uh, story number one. It's not one. a Game Gear, sorry. Oh, it's a, bummer. It's, it's the, the great, 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 great grandson of the Game Gear. <laughs> <laughs> might, might need more greats in there. Anyway, um, this was in the news a little bit ago. I just want to touch on it briefly. Apex Legends uh, was hacked big time, and even during one of their tournaments... The hackers were able to get in there and activate cheats on the tournament players' computers while they were playing. And so, yeah. So you had tournament players that would be playing and realize, I can see through the walls. I have wall hacks on now. And at that point, they basically would just back away from the keyboard and say, I didn't do this. This cheat just popped up <laughs> so that they wouldn't get disqualified, you know. And come to find out that yeah someone has been uh or has found a way to potentially totally compromise these users computers via apex legends and do things like enable cheats and things while they're playing and that's only the tip of the iceberg if you can enable a cheat while someone is actively playing you can do a whole lot more on their system as well right and so well i'm not downloading that now yeah, uh, I, you know, I should have found a follow up story, but um, I don't know if they've patched it yet or not. But definitely be careful with Apex Legends until you hear otherwise. Not that they would target you. Obviously, these guys got targeted because it was a public event, the tournament. But, you know, yeah, they right. would uh, troll's be able gonna to, troll to flex. Yeah, flex their hacking skills or whatever. But uh, yeah, they are. Uh, what do they mm-hmm. call it? It's an RCE exploit being abused in Apex Legends that could be delivered via the game itself or or RC, it's anti RC cheat e? protection. Right. <laughs> so so you're so gonna get it from the game the or the thing that's supposed to stop the cheating from happening. <laughs> yeah. That's ironic. That's yeah. funny. Wow. Pretty funny. So and then they also said uh change your uh their advice to any players in the tournament at the time was uh change your Discord passwords, ensure your emails are secure Enable MFA for all of your accounts and do a clean OS install. And I'm reading this going, I know what this is like. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. It uh, can happen to anyone. All right. What's the other thing here? Oh, yeah, Jaron. Uh, interesting news from Larion, our friends over, that create, over there that created Baldur's Gate 3. Massive success of Baldur's Gate 3. So... The typical studio would be like, "All right, let's put let's out a make DLC. One, right? Let's make another one." Yeah, uh, they they're, they're doing neither. They're not going to be doing any more Baldur's Gate. They're stepping away from it. Um, they said their they their heart isn't really in it anymore. So, and it's probably has to do with that they have to pay a lot of money to Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> Incorrect, <for D&D>, right? <laughs> They, yeah. they, they released a statement saying it has nothing to do with their arrangement with Wizards of the Coast, nor their um, any bad blood with Wizards of the Coast, because immediately when this came out, everyone on Twitter and Reddit and everywhere was like, oh, this is because Wizards of the Coast are jerks. I'm sure it is. The Wizards of the Coast is terrible. And the uh, the guy that runs, his name is Sven Vinke. Vink? Anyway. Uh, he's like, no, it's not them. We just we don't want to play in this sandbox anymore. Um, right. And any There's stories that we want right. to tell wouldn't work very well with the five Dungeons and Dragons five E rules. And so we want to we want to do our own thing again. So does does Baldur's Gate like the game itself story like end very well for that, or does it leave it? Open? Oh, it's yeah, it's a complete ending, hundred percent. Okay. There's no problems with that. Um. Yeah, they uh, they they wrapped everything up with a bow. Good so on them. Say, they released they a game. Say, there's a beginning. There's an ending, and yeah, they're yeah. not taking anything else from you. Interesting. Huh. Weird. Yeah. I, I well, feel like I, Stockholm my syndrome. First, where I'm like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> my first thing was, oh dang it! But then immediately after, I thought, this is genius because can you imagine the pressure of following up Baldur's Gate three with the Baldur's oh, Gate yeah. four? Oh my you know, gosh! They would have to make a perfect game to. Uh, keep everyone happy. And so now they take a lot of that pressure with them still to their whatever the next game is, but not as much because it doesn't right. have the Baldur's Gate name. So, right. 
and yeah, story. Think, they can do whatever they want, smart. right? They can, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They can create whatever magic system they want, have whatever rules apply to their spell castings and their with the billions movement. that they got from this, from yeah, this they game. Made, they've made good money on this, that's for sure. And then uh, we'll round off the episode with a review of a sweet, sweet gaming handheld from Lang. Yeah. So Tony will tell you, I probably have nagged him for the past six months on handhelds. I've learned quite <laughs> a bit. I, should I get this and, one? Uh, but what about this yeah. one? <laughs> what about this one? You should get this one. I don't know. I don't Tony. know. <laughs> I don't know. Quite a bit. So most of the time I'd nag him and he just replied, just get the ally, stop it. And <laughs> I didn't listen. So <laughs> nope. I, I started off um, getting the Steam Deck last year's summer sale, and I loved it. It was my first handheld. It was great, um, but I wanted, I really did want to try to get one that was Windows-based. Um, before I had got the Steam Deck, I started looking a lot at... Um, GPD handhelds. For those of you that have heard of them, they've been kind of been a weird offshoot, but the last few months they've made some that are pretty incredible. Um, I have a second version for more on YouTube. Here we go. This is the GPD Win 4. Um, last year they came out with a version that had the AMD um, 6800. Um, then this year they have one that is the 7800 and on Indiegogo they have the 8000 series now. Um, they came out with versions with um, 16, 32, and even up to like 64 gigs of RAM, which for <laughs> held, I, that's, that's what I said. Yeah, 64 is it's ridiculous. mind boggling. So this thing has been a lot of fun. So they have this one and most of you are probably thinking, oh, that's just the Vita pretty much um i love the vita look that was yeah, peak yeah. handheld right there yeah. great so this is great here. so when i had the steam deck it was just a tad big it wasn't very heavy but i had big hands and i felt like it's okay this one fits a whole lot better with the only complaint i have are the size of the joysticks are a little bit small they're like a joy con mm -hmm. um but it works it works for me and my lifestyle. I I go to and from work using public transit, so I'm playing on this. I That's have perfect. lots of kids in my house, so I, I don't like to have a really nice setup yet because they'll terrorize it. So this is what I really wanted. They now have a version that is the um, GPD uh, Win Mini. And that one, I was tempted, if for those of you that like the Nintendo DS look, it looks like a DS. Like, nice. precisely. Clamshell and everything. Uh-huh. And it has upwards of the same really nice specs with a screen, same size as a Steam Deck, and runs at 120 hertz. It's really nice. Um, Tony had mentioned Fox earlier. He does some fantastic reviews. Yeah. Um, this... This first version had issues with noise and heat. This version, this next version that I got, is phenomenal. I have I love it. Now, for the fun little things on this, I'll show you. And for those of you that haven't seen, Hang it on, is. Let me, let me make you big. Oh. Here Whoa. Go. Ooh. So here Don't you go. say that Here's... out of context. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. Oops. So let's see a good focus. There's a good focus. So on this side right here, this is actually a trackpad with a click. Uh, uh, menu button uh, underneath. I would love that on the Ally yeah. menu trackpad. Um, over here, we have a fingerprint scanner. Nice. So I will, this is going to be your YouTube. So I just turned it on. Let's see if it boots up. There we go. So there it is. And just wham, bam. Nope, that's the wrong finger. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm yep. at. Got to put all the fingers so in. So there it is. And then for functionality, what? this is the best part. Just this. I love mm -hmm. that slide just action. That. That's slick. Yep. So for what, those what of us that missed the sidekick, this guy. I got the 32 um, RAM plus I got the 512 um, storage. I was just going to put a little bit more memory in on my own because I got it used. And which um, SOC it is does it have? 7840. 
Okay. Yep. That's the same one so, that's in roughly the same one that's in the Ally and the Legion Go. And, yeah. Yeah. It's a great SOC. It's it when I've been playing this, it surprises me because games that I play, I know how much it loads. We're all trained to be like, okay, I could take a drink of water. I can stand up. I can set it down for a second while it's loading. Nope. It surprises me. It's like, oh crap, it's already loaded. <laughs> Time to play. It's been yeah, it's been a lot of fun. The other functionality that I really love right there, this switch, you can't really see right there. There we go. This switch right switch here. Switch on the side. Uh-huh. It switches from mouse to gamepad like this. Mm. It just goes back and forth. So my joysticks and the bumpers are the mouse and mouse mode, and I can just move it around, and then I just click it, and it goes into a gamepad. So that's cool. Those, too. I am a complete sucker for gimmicks, and those gimmicks really sold me, and I'm really glad they came out with this version because I – kind of listened to tony and started with the steam deck but then i saw this and gave my daughter my steam deck and then i've been messing with this for about three weeks now and i'm loving it so go check out um gpd um the other thing it's all on the show notes i put a review from fox i put their i think i put their indiegogo as well as their homepage. and the thing i really like about their homepage, they they don't hide anything. They say, okay, here, go to games. And you're thinking, what games does the handheld have? And it literally goes through. <laughs> it goes down and it says, here's the links to all the platform clients. Here's the, um, here's all the links to all the different emulators you can get. Here's the hmm. links for all oh, of wow. the hand don't mapping tell tools. <laughs> yeah. I know. Like, that's, well, that's look, why look I was at just the like, link there. Uh, gpd.hk not a us yeah, that's based. the other part no nope. <laughs> yeah, so be careful right. that's well and that's what i mean they can put all that stuff on there and not be worried yeah. about uh the u anyone in the u.s um getting getting their own yeah. yeah so yeah um nice little form factor it's got clear bumpers and nice triggers back mappable buttons on the back this thing's a hoot this thing's a blast off oculink i think it's the only one that has an oculink so if you want to go crazy Put they actually EGPU have you on there yep that they hook up for extra graphics and everything so. so with that um does gpd win or gpd have a software on there where you can limit the frame frame rate like with the steam deck yes yes nice yep you can adjust that yep very cool and then so, uh, yeah. what? Uh, so you got you got a deal on yours because you bought it second hand. But mm -hmm. what did what do they go for uh, new? Do you know? New, I would say eight to nine hundred, to be perfectly honest. Um, for, but that's because most of them on their Indiegogo right now are all the eight thousand series. Oh, yeah. So that's if you want to look for something second hand or elsewhere, they're kind of hidden wherever you look i i got mine off ebay um i got mine with a the actual um dock by them the a case that's made for excuse me a switch but fits perfectly so mm -hmm. gpd cool. for the win what would you give it out of 10 um solid nine just a really good solid nine. If it was solid just nine, if the joysticks were a little bit, um, just a tad bigger, even though I, my gameplay, I do a lot of platformers and fighters. Um, I won't do shooters unless I'm on my, this PC, mm -hmm. um, joysticks were bigger. And I think it's just me. I need a little bit more time on it to be honest i think if i did another review and had it more set up and tweaked out i would i'd give it a higher score so ending cool. higher score all right very nice i like to i like to see what else is out there competition in the marketplace is always always a good thing yeah. i love handhelds if i could own like all of them i you would collect them collect them all they're your pokemon <laughs> yep all right, well, that is the end. Uh, let's give a big shout out before we leave, though, to our awesome patrons, patreon.com slash 
Help Desk Arcade. If you donate $6 a month or more, among other things, you get a shout out on the air, which Jaron has for us right now. Thank you to David Roshinsky, Connor Kisaw, and Wiffleball Tony. Jason Eatman, K. Onda Carnal, is a hot dog sandwich. Yes. Andy Bird, be the eight year old. Tony, the home theater geek. Travis Johnson, by Geek Show, Arcade Help Desk stickers. At Pie Man Graphics on Etsy, all proceeds go to Lee George Cade's medical bills. Jeremy, no name, no color. Keslo, Eric Steinman, Eric Cruz. Ona's Tech Cred, plus 49.9. Matt Nelson, Harry Patch, Adam, Aaron Faulkner, Stuart Lloyd. History is there for you to learn from or repeat your choice. Ryan M. and Adam Hecht. All right. Thank you so much, Patreon backers. Thanks for dropping by, Lang. Always a pleasure. Always. He's waving. For See, I waved again. I did it again. Audio. Dang it. <laughs> for those of you, audio only. It's been a pleasure. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thanks for being here and moaning and boning with us. Yeah. <laughs> On that <laughs> note, Owen, <laughs> take us out. Hey, we hope you care.